Hello everyone, this is Jimmy and welcome to episode 4 of Installation Route. I made a couple small changes to our mana system here. As you can see, there's a lot more mana spreaders. I now have one spreader bound to each flower so that we're not saturating our mana spreader. Um, it all points into a mana pool. Now, the way I have to set up, it's there's supposed to be a spark above this mana pool with a... Um, augment to cause the mana to like disperse from this mana pool but we can't make sparks yet so uh using this mana to make a like to craft on the runic altar is going to be a little difficult i'll figure out how exactly i'm going to do that later hopefully we just don't need to use a runic altar again until we can make the uh batania portal the sparks are gated behind the elven gateway so um yeah if we can make that we can make things a little bit easier for us Secondly, uh, I've been using this thing to craft, you know, to continue to make our living wood, living stone, whatever. Um, but I think it's time that we move this somewhere else. This layout, as it is horizontally, takes up a whole lot of floor space. So once uh, I'm going to let it finish transforming this set, I think we can switch it over to being vertically stacked. And probably, let's see, if we move this cable to here then we can vertically stack it all right up here and we you know just use up like a corner of our base where uh where we don't use half of our almost half of our floor space just for transmutations you can't see it but there are flowers down the inside so exact same build but done in way less practical space uh, i am slightly concerned can i actually get all the living rock out of there there's probably a whole bunch of living rock stuff on the inside, isn't there? Uh, I don't actually know how much I started with. I do get to swap it all with one click. Oh, no. Just barely didn't get it all with one click. Did I get eight pieces? No, I didn't. There's a whole, probably a whole bunch on the inside. Um, We'll set up a hopper hawk to pick that up then. I think I may have gotten a little bit too clever for my own good. So if we look really carefully, you see that the blocks inside there, in the very corner, are not selected. The exchanging wand, uh, this exchanging wand, uh, will only uh, only swap blocks that touch air on one side, um, or touch airy blocks on one side. So like the pure daisy on the inside counts, but that's why it that's why it covers the blocks on the inside edges. But the very inner corner one doesn't touch air on any side unless I can't swap it. Um, but if I like dig into it. Then I can swap it. See, like I can swap the one I'm targeting, or if I break this one, it'll swap the one above it. But I uh, see if I can get the camera to show you. It won't swap the one above that. It's kind of hard to tell. It's a quirk of this wand. So, anyways, I don't think we can tuck it this far in the corner unless we just ignore that column. Which I mean, I guess is not like the worst solution. Yeah, in second thought, I'll just uh, ignore that very innermost column. So we only get, I think it's 56, 54 plus. Pop it to it here. Should be 56, right? There's eight blocks that don't get swapped. Uh, actually, that very top one might even do get swapped. Let me go all the way to the top and we can check. Now, this one does get swapped, so where, where are my missing blocks? Should be 50... There's seven blocks that don't get swapped every time. So 64 minus 7 is... 54 plus 3, 57. Ah, oh, here they are. Okay, so I guess I just wasn't patient enough. We get 57 blocks per minute. Eh, one block a second. Not bad. Anyways, that's enough cleanup tasks for today, I think. There's going to be more cleanup this series than usual because of the limited space. I can't just let old systems linger to die. Uh, to die of old age because they're taking up precious space that so we could retask with something else. Look at how roomy it feels in here now. Um, so at some point, I'm sure our farm will have to go because it takes up a lot of space, but that time is not now. So let's move on. Today, I would like to make the Elven Gateway Core. Before we even get to this recipe, let's make the crafting table. This is not that bad. A block of gold and we can smoke some quartz with, uh, yeah, it's very cheap. So I think I should still have some leftover quartz, probably. And once we get the elven trade i think we can get a unified inventory which will make my life a whole lot easier so anyways smoke some quartz there we go one advanced crafting table i'll just put it above a regular crafting table it doesn't make that many things that are relevant that's way far off 
this is a lot of work to make rich slag a very funny way i don't think we'll ever make rich slag that way um i mean i guess stuff like this is nice but the, I, I don't even see the recipes for these yet i think they're gated by stages or whatever i'm not a terribly big fan of not letting you see recipes but i don't know or maybe it's made from some mechanic that doesn't have an nei recipe again like i'd love to have a crafting table in my inventory but that's wishful thinking for now we'll make the elven gateway core so the stuff in here the only thing we don't have yet i think are the four dusts um and I, I might have some of these but i think all these dusts we can induction smell a rune with so that's with snowballs this is with niter overized obsidian and sulfur to make some of and i think that'll be our solution for now it's not the best solution not the cheapest one but it is pretty easy if you only need them in small quantities I feel like my inventory is perpetually a disaster in this pack. I hope once we have unified storage, I can fix it up by just putting some stuff away for good. But uh, for now, I guess as long as I have one inventory slot, we can keep on trudging. These ingredients should make the gateway core. And I think that completes a quest. This is actually a great reward. This is a whole mana pool worth of mana, I believe. Uh, I'm just going to stash it as like backup mana. But uh, it's good to have backup mana. Anyways, I think this is all the components for the gateway. So where do we want to put it? Um, Let's slip it perhaps down in here. It's like a fine place to put it. And I'll uh, sink it into the ground. In an effort to consume a, or preserve a little bit more space. Leave the corners. Do we need corners on this portal? I'm going to look it up. I don't actually remember. According to the documentation, we do not. Well, cool. I hate corners on portals. Say one of these and one of these. That corner is temporary. Don't worry about it. Be gone, corners. All right, so this should be our elven gate. Whoopsies. I place it right. It's the shape of a three by three nether portal, basically. And then somewhere around it, more or less anywhere around it, you need, within five blocks, you need two mana pools that have Natura pylons on top of them. And then you need some mana in each of those pools. I believe I have a full mana tablet on me. So for now, just use this to fill our mana pools. Although we can, that way, we can uh, use sparks to move mana in a little bit. With some mana in each of the pools, we can right-click that to open it up, and then any items we throw through will be traded. And now, by trading our book, we get the Elven version of the Batania book, which has a bit more documentation in it. Although, most of this is irrelevant. Like, I'm pretty sure the Ritual of Gaia in this pack has changed, because uh, we, there's obviously not enough room to fight a Gaia Guardian in here. Um, also, the, with the combat changes, I'm pretty sure we're not the pack's not going to make us fight a Gaia Guardian. Um, I saw that there's a crafting recipe for Gaia spirits. So when and if we get around to needing these, we can uh, we can craft them. All right. Well, the key things about this trade are that we can trade. I mean, there's a Batania stuff, right? Living wood for Dreamwood, Mana Seal for Elementium, Mana Pearls for Pixie Dust. Uh, actually, let's do some of that right now. Pixie Dust is a component in Spark Augments, which is uh, going to be very helpful. Um what else is there but the big thing is that we can now trade for uh here we go item ducts so a block of tin gets us an item duct and a block of invar gets us a fluid duct or a block of copper gets us a regular fluid duct. block of invar gets us a hardened fluid duct but um yeah this now gives us access to ducts that don't suck and then i believe we can make them opaque or we can make them transparent if we like uh personally i just like to see what's going on in my fluid ducts but that's just me it does make it a little bit lag here for now i need a lot of tin to make those uh to trade for those item ducts so i'm just gonna smelt tin ore directly um i'm also purifying some of it so that we can be a bit more efficient but We've got plenty of ore, so we may as well put it to use. We're still not using too much energy. Perfect. We're going to have to upgrade our energy soon, but I have some I have some plans for that in the near future. I gathered up some of our supplies, and let's go make some big trades. So, living wood, that should give us green wood. Mana steel will get us um, elementum. Mana pearls, uh, this is a whole stack of mana pearls. 
for uh, for the pixie dust. Now I need to trade one block of copper for a quest. And then let me make sure I, these pools are going to run out, run out on this mid-trade. If they run out, the elves just keep any items we've given them. I'm going to wait for these to finish before I toss my block of invar and tin in for my ducks. Because those are the real things uh, that are valuable. Make sure that the mana pools don't empty. I'm going to make a dispersive augment. We're waiting for pixie dust to do this. Apply it to this spark. And now this mana pool will try to send mana to any mana pools nearby. So uh, it doesn't appear to be in range of the one up there. But it's sending its mana to... Well, any mana pool nearby that has a spark. So if I get a couple more sparks... We can apply them to these two pools. And now mana will be sent from here to these, I believe. They are... Doesn't really seem to be doing that. Why is it not doing so? Am I misunderstanding? Oh, it's dispersive? The wrong... I probably didn't want dispersive. I want recessive. Dispersive, I think, makes it send mana to mana items in your inventory. That's why my mana tablet's full. Uh, but if we make recessive... Oopsies. So you can shift right-click this. Shift right-click that to get your spark back, or your uh, augment back. Try that again, this time using the right augment. And there we go, we immediately see it sends mana to these until it itself is empty. Cool. So uh, we could then put a couple new mana pools here, and then we could have one with the, aug you know, we have basically three crafting pools, right? One with each augment, and then we can set up like batteries so that we can store more than one mana pool worth of mana at any given time, yada, yada, yada. But anyways, with these auto filled, they're never gonna, or they're not gonna empty on us mid craft. So take those, and this gives us hardened fluid ducks and uh, hardened item duck, or regular item ducks. Once we get the item duck, we can complete this quest and get a terminal. Ooh. Quest complete. So I'll set that up in a second. But first, let's do our mana pool thing. So I want one alchemy catalyst pool. Uh, do I have mana pools on me? Grab a few of those. Three for now. One on the alchemy catalyst. One that's just for regular crafting. Um, I think should spread it out a bit so that they don't... Uh, the items I throw on one don't end up splashing into another one. And then now we can also upgrade our this other alchemy catalyst into a conjuration catalyst which can be used to duplicate items. I think it's probably slightly cheaper to like duplicate glowstone than to make it from levers, like levers to redstone to glowstone. But uh it's yeah, it just gives easier access to more supplies. There's some other things that we can dupe with this too that we can't just uh easily craft. So nether quartz is a good one. A coal is probably not worth another rack is pr pretty good one. Um I don't know, it's nice to have. Easy to dupe grass. Alright, anyways. Uh, we put that there. And give it its banner pool. And then we'll put sparks on all of these as well. Back to thermal logistics then. I kind of like how we place it above a crafting table. And like, the two connect. I don't know if that's an intentional choice of exactly where to put these dots. If so, that's very clever. Also very subtle. Looks like a nice pride. Anyways, uh, it doesn't do anything on its own. What you have to do is connect it via item ducts to other inventories. So if I do that, then we now see items in here. But I still can't get them. It says, please put a requester in the requester slot before requesting items. There's a lot of requests in that sentence. Put a requester here. This is a upgrade to the servo. So thermal logistics adds a couple new blocks. Requesters crafters and distributors um we'll use that we'll we'll describe what they do as we run into them but basically requesters pulls items or crafts them i uh, think of it like a retriever except it has the crafting component as well likewise a crafter um it crafts items i assume it's something it's akin to like logistics pipes uh or applied to logistics crafting recipes you know you have an input map and an output map um so anyways once you have this you can click an item to request a certain amount of it uh so i think it's something like right click oh no not right click middle click so it's a left click for one and it pulls one and it takes a little while because the item has to literally transit the pipe right i assume the quality of your requester does contribute to uh to time so if you have a higher tier requester 
Uh, like a resident one has a 3x speed boost. Um, or if your pipes are, uh, are, are impulse pipes, which we'll upgrade to impul impulse pipes in a second. But anyways, uh, I know there, this thing says a button to get more than one. What's that button? Hold on. Shift click to request a stack. And you can edit this item as you want. Uh, it'll also say, you know, hey, we, I can't get these because I don't know how to craft this. So right click to cancel. Anyways, you click this button, it sends everything back. Um, I don't know how you determine like where it goes back to. I think that because there's no equivalent of item sinks, I think it goes to any linked inventory that it can fit in. So uh, just be mindful of that, I guess. Um, anyways, once all these items are here, we can dump it all. We have a crafting table, uh, which works a lot like the uh, the crafting table from, from, uh, what's that pack, or what's that not called? Logistics pipes. So you can import a recipe, it'll tell you what you're missing. Um, maybe if I import a recipe that we have the supplies for. Do I not have, oh, I guess I, I have only connected one of our tables. All right, we'll do stone brick. So we can import the recipe for stone brick. It looks like we can drag ghost items into here too. That's why it's letting me do this weird draggy thing. Hit request. The items will get pulled through. And bam, auto crafting. It, ish, auto, well, no, not auto crafting at all. This is just a linked inventory, but um, like linked inventory is a good start. All right, so now if I want to clean up my inventory, stuff goes in here and we hit this button, bam, it's all gone. Nice and clean. So I'm going to go ahead and link this up to all of our inventories. Uh, we probably have to move the bottom layer ones because, I mean, I can just run the... You know, I'm just going to move all of our inventories back up against this wall here, actually, so that we can uh, we can keep all of our storage one one place. Um, are there any crate type things? Great. Storage item. How many items do you store? I want to see if we can get denser storage than just chests. But then we can hook it up, hook our storage up to all of it. Oh, uh, but in addition to that, let's oopsies, upgrade all of our item ducts to uh, to impulse ducts. So I believe that just requires fluid transporting them with glowstone. And four pieces of glowstone fills five ducts. I can live with that. A bit of a shame that Batania only lets you wear two rings. I wanted to also wear a greater band of mana and a greater band of aura so that we could, uh, basically this thing produces 10 mana per second. Um, half a mana per tech, it's not a lot of mana, but it's free mana, so, you know. Who would turn down free mana? But why is it stopped? Oh, we're run out, we've run out of energy. I should really do something about our uh, energy situation sooner rather than later. Because having to refill this dynamo, it's not the best option. But it'll do for now. I couldn't find better uh, single block inventories with the exception of upgraded and and or enchanted strong boxes. Like if we get them, I guess technically it's 36 the number of slots. No, 27 is the number of slots in a single chest, right? So I guess technically hardened without enchants is better than a chest, but whatever, chests are cheaper. So anyways, we have a unified inventory now. Um, unfortunately, I don't seem to be able to sort by item count, which is my preferred way of sorting. Uh, I don't actually know what is its sort method. I have no clue how it sorts the items. Oh wait, it is sort by item count, never mind. Huh, I don't know why I didn't think it was. All right, well, that is my preferred way of sorting. Haha. Um, but yeah, now we can take items, uh, store items. One of our quests gave us this network manager. I kind of want to see... Oopsies. What do I search here? Network... Where did I put it? Uh-oh. I'm already losing stuff. Found it. It was kidnapped by this hopper hawk, which I guess probably has a bit more range than it needs to be. I could probably be a petite, but whatever. Um, when I was moving items over, I just broke the chests. And uh, yeah, anyways, what exactly does this do? Use on a servo to monitor the network. There are no servos here. So it tells me whether or not there are items in the dots. Press V to enable linking. What do I link? Now let's read the quest. <laughs> Uh, the terminal, yep, yeah, this tells me literally nothing about the network manager. All right, well, then we'll figure it out later. 
put it away for now. Um, before we get on to this quest, which ends this era, though, let's make a bit more power. Preferably in a way that is a bit more automated than me moving coal around. So, my plan is to make power from one of these ores. I think it's Sheldonite. So we get Sheldonite pretty often. Um, which one of these is it? That's Living Matter. Not that one. What was the quest that gave us fabricator for it here we go we get one piece of sheldonite every 11 seconds so with this ore we can i'm thinking we'll pulverize it for two dust smelt it for two ingots per ore and then from there we will numismatic press it into six coins per ore and then burn it for in a numismatic dynamo for 600k or for 60k rf per coin that means each piece of ore will produce um 60 times 6 360k rf before efficiency bonuses i think that's not half bad uh it's compared to what we get out of a piece of charcoal right now which i'd say is a block of charcoal is producing somewhere between 200 maybe 250,000 rf per block so um yeah, I think this represents a reasonable way for us to make power. Um, and now that we have all of these item ducts, in fact, if I hook this up all the way to here, we can do something like... Uh, let's not hook up to those, because those are empty. I don't want stuff going in there. But uh, we can hook up to all of these things, connect them together. Jeez. Don't connect here, no matter what you do. No thanks. And, uh, there we go. Am I stuck? Let me out. And then now we can access our items through here. But most importantly, now if I extend this this way, we can use um, either retrievers or requesters. Of, say, if I wanted to, like, request Sheldonite to over here, right? I could put a requester on this pipe, um, and it'll pull it all the way over from there so in, in a sense you know we're making a networked inventory where we can have the network automation move items around for us instead of our hands here should be all the things we need to uh build this system so a pulverizer a redstone furnace a compactor uh they all need to well the compactor at least needs to be upgraded but if we're going to upgrade one of them may as well upgrade all of them to hardened here because it needs the augment slot um and let's just start building so my plan is that I will run uh, item ducts on the level above the energy duct. That way we can have, you know, basically anywhere we have energy, we probably want items too. They tend to go hand in hand. All right, so a pulverizer, redstone furnace, compactor, and we'll just say items in the top. Um, does this have a byproduct? No. Oh, in fact, we could just redstone furnace with fluid or uh, anodizes. Eh. Does it really matter? Does it save us a meaningful amount of energy? Well, I've already made the machine, so I'm not going to bother with it. All right, so this one is input this side. I'll put this one. Return. Uh, I guess we don't need auto input on any of these, huh? Because we're ejecting from one to the other. Uh, you in, out. And then we will take one more of these and put the requester here. And we will configure you to... Request up to a stack of Sheldonite. Uh, always on. So we should, in a couple seconds, it's coming from all the way across the base, so it might take it a little bit to get here. But, put our upgrades in and put this augment in so that makes coins instead of plates. But items should be coming. Come on, don't make me a liar. There we go. So it gets pulverized, smelted compacted so it looks like the compactor will be our bottleneck here this is probably still sufficiently fast um we probably can't well we could run all these machines in just a second once i actually plug our dynamos in but anyways from here we can feed into a number of ducts uh i don't want these to connect i guess what i can do is place that one first disconnect it there we go and then we can feed this into any number of dynamos. Um, trying to figure out how I want to place my dynamos that allows us to scale this system the, the most easily. 
Maybe if I just place all the dynamos like uh point them that way. Place our dynamos like this. We can go all the way up to the roof. And then do I have an energy cable on me? We'll get some of those. Like so. And then we'll upgrade all of these. And yeah, like this, we can still walk by if I have to get back here to for maintenance or whatever. Um, but we can put a whole stack of these dynamos here. Um, we should probably set this to round robin mode. I think we need an extractor uh, servo for round robin. So let's just make one of these. Yeah, hardened here will do. And be able to request items like this. Oh boy, it's such a huge relief not having to dig through inventories find whatever you need every single time it's a huge boon uh don't connect there either or there wait oh yeah we don't need that connected all right so if i set this here we can round robin ignored you do not have to extract okay so now all of our dynamos should get power soon each one produces adr if a tick uh, so all three together produce us another 240. I can, I'll probably add like another three so that we can handle base load on our numismatics here. And then we'll handle, or I, I guess, no, then we can just turn this off. Yeah, if we turn this off, we no longer have to feed it charcoal. And that's kind of the goal here, right? So let's make uh, maybe even six more numismatics. Um, and we can be coin powered off nickels. Haha, <laughs> 69k RF each. Eight of these now produce more po enough power to power the whole base so um if i need more i think the next step is to make the reinforced upgrade kit so this just baseline production increased um more augment slots bunch of other stuff but now we can make everything in here with the exception of signalum so let's uh well we can make signalum let's take the quick detour to make this this is made by making the dust which is copper silver and destabilized redstone okay so that just means we need to get a whole bunch of destabilized redstone by melting down redstone yes let's not do that uh you sit we'll make a chest for you uh we also have to turn a lot of this lava into obsidian for that glass and unfortunately i don't think there's a machine that we can use for this yet definitely can't make that one um and while this machine can do it we can't make it quite yet so I guess we are making, we can't like fluid transposer water into it, can we? No, I think we're just gonna do it the old fashioned way. The old fashioned way here would really suck if not for the fact that I could just exchange and gadget it. So, well, not exchange and gadget, but uh, Rod of the Shifting Crust. Uh, oh, come on. I have crap. Oh, I'll do that. I have dirt. Let me do this. Thank you. And then I just have to mine dirt, which is a lot easier to mine, incidentally, than uh, obsidian. All that obsidian turned into a stack of hardened glass. Um, my goal is probably to make, I don't know, about 10 of these upgrades right off the bat. So we need 10 Terra Steel. Uh, need a few more. I think I have a bit more in here. But every now and then I'll keep coming back and pushing this button. Well, that's 10 Terra Steel. Uh, Electrum, I think we just have. Nope, I need a bit more than that. A bit more of that. Make a stack of that. So silver and gold. Need 200 pieces of redstone to melt. So let's, let's convert a whole lot of levers into redstone. Uh, looks like we're out of mana again. I've been slowly draining my... Here we go. Redstone for the signalum. So all that's left are runes. These have to be any of the seasons, so any of the tier 2 runes. And of these, I think spring is probably the easiest to make. We could just craft oak saplings uh, through this recipe. Let's see. This is eh, a little bit harder. That's a little bit harder. That's a lot harder with the cake. So yeah, let's make uh, spring runes. Um, and I'll need at least 10 of them. Maybe at this point it's... Ah, uh, no. Nah, I'll hold off on automating the altar a little bit longer. Set up the altar again. This time we have elven spreaders on it. Uh, I should actually make potency lenses for those too, but um, this will make our rune crafting a little bit faster. With three amped up mana spreaders here, this crafts pretty fast, so crafting it by hand is probably still 
easier than having to set up a full automation system. We will definitely have to automate rooms later. Uh, we don't have a lot of the same tools I'm used to for automating runes, so we'll have to come up with something clever. And there's definitely enough runic altar recipes that we can't set up an altar per recipe. I mean, of the 58, we don't we won't need all of them automated. But even like the maybe 10-ish that we will need to automate, like the tier 1 and tier 2 runes, uh, I don't foresee having enough space to put one altar e for each one. So we're going to have to somehow build a system that can... Uh, that can have that can service multiple crafting recipes on demand. I haven't quite figured out how we're gonna do that yet, but I figure we'll cross that bridge when we get there. All 200 of that glow, uh, redstone, sorry, was melted into a destabilized redstone, and this should make signalum. Come on, auto split for me. And I guess I had a little bit of extra copper. Whoops. All right, cool. So that is 80 pieces of signalum. Uh, can we just smelt this or no, it has to be, has to be induction smelted. All right, so give me some sand and is it one-to-one? -one? Yeah, it be 80 sand. And then we can get ingots, which we can turn into gears. Um, another nice thing that that gets us is the upgraded requester. So the this upgraded requester pulls 64 at a time twice per second, and gets a 2x speed boost. I'm down for that. I love this uh, requester. With the Signalum one, now my requests are basically instant. Like, one second to get the item. Um, it's close enough to instant that I'm going to call it instant. Anyways, let's request the fill-in for 10 of these reinforced kits, and we can upgrade a few of our machines. So, uh, the first one I want to upgrade is... What is a bottleneck in this process? I mean, I guess if I upgrade one, I have to upgrade the others too, right? But I want to upgrade our uh, water production thing, and I probably should swap this out for a real pipe. But uh, that'll allow us to produce mana faster. Upgrading the furnace to uh, reinforced here and giving it three upgrades, whereas the others are at uh, one upgrade hardened tier seems to just barely leave the furnace as a bottleneck in the operation which is what we want but anyways this causes it to use a lot more power so i think we may as well upgrade all of our generators right now um it's gonna use i think i have eight generators it's gonna use almost all of my upgrades we can make more later though but uh we can this upgrade this gives them two more augment slots so i'll put one with the uh catalyzer fuel catalyzer to increase fuel efficiency need eight of these um, and then the other one, I'll put the uh, induction coil limiter or whatever to uh, to make it stop burning fuel when the internal buffer is full. With all these new upgrades now, each numismatic animal produces 160 per tick, so times 8, that's uh, 800 plus 400, up to 1.2k RF a tick, and they only output, uh, like they only burn down their fuel when they actually need to, so... Yeah, it's very good. We get seventy-eight thousand RF per coin, and six. We still get six point six coins per uh, ore, and I'm like two hundred percent sure that we are still consuming our ore slower than um, than we make it. Right, we have, let's see, which of the ores was it here? Sheldonite, and we have three point one thousand of it in the bank. That's a tremendous amount. Watching this system closely, I actually stand corrected. The bottleneck is not the redstone furnace. It is, by a tiny margin, the aqueous accumulator. I don't think there's a better infinite water um, thing in this pack. Like, if we can... Uh, actually, is the aqueous accumulator, if you surround it with on more sides by water, does it produce water faster? I'm not actually sure. Um, let's try it. With the water source here. Do you make more water per update now? Maybe? Possibly? I think that does. Well, there we go. Now it's no longer the aqueous accumulator. Problem solved. One last thing I want to accomplish today. Um, I'm going to put these dominant upgrades on these sparks. If I can click it. Come on, let me in. All right, if I get rid of this, I think that closes the portal. We can reopen the portal afterwards. Apparently it doesn't close the portal. Somewhat surprising. Uh, did I put the dominant spark on? There we go. All right, have your pylons back. 
Um, anyways, the, uh, what was I saying? By having dominant sparks there and dominant sparks on these three pools, we now have basically these are, this is a priority negative one pool. These are priority positive one pools. And if I put regular sparks on these mana pools here, these will be priority zero pools. So after filling up these five pools, it'll fill up these pools. And then this set of nine or more, if we need more, um, can serve as a mana battery. And nine mana pools is a huge amount of battery. So when we when I go to like use the uh, duplication pool, we can do more than one pool's worth of work. Well, technically, without this, we can do up to two pools worth of work before we have to wait for more mana to be sent here. Right, there's a one mana pool here and that one mana pool before it's full. But now, by using, you know, I could go 9, I could go 25, you can, we can build as big a mana battery as we like to uh, to buffer mana for large-scale crafting tasks. So all we need now is a bunch of sparks. The annoying thing about sparks is that they take blaze powder, and right now I'm making blaze powder out of EXP, and I have run out of EXP. To address the experience shortage, I set up a just a dedicated... Um, redstone furnace that I can pull items out of. Turns out, smelting iron is one of the best things. For some reason, this gives six experience. I think I was doing gold before, which gives one experience. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know why iron gives so much. I'm not going to complain. This is my experience farm for now. So I did manage to make these six parks. Can I make this jump? Probably not. And then we can put these here. And that'll fill up over time, uh, only when these five primary pools are not already full. So, mana battery. All right. Um, anyways, I think that's all the time we've got for today. So next time, we'll come back and make these various tools. Uh, we'll have to make the crafting table for them, make the tools, yada, yada, yada. But um, that will lead into uh, some new automation options and the beginning of part two. Lots of quests in here. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.